In this video today we're going to be looking at what we can do extra in Google Photos. You can see my screen at the moment on mobile. Top left is Google Photos and Vibrance HDR. I use that all the time. Top left on the next screen is Snapseed which I also use quite a bit. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is check something and that is that I'm using Android 7 and I'm using the Google Photos app 4.32 um, ends in 2.4. That's quite important because I, I don't think I'm a beta tester on this one at all, so it's just a regular thing. So, getting started with these couple of things that we are talking about. I have thousands and thousands of photos already uploaded. So, for example, and I'm going to give the example of... I'm looking for a piece of screenshot, which is just from a, an ebook that I was um, just looking at to do with fonts and things. Now look at this very carefully because um, you tap it once and you go into the edit version first. In other words, the edit screen. Now what you've got on the right hand side is the little uh, nine grid, which is this one here, and I'm going to tap it once. We've got crop document. Notice that this is a literal screen share, so it's very, very strict of whatever I captured on my screen. Now watch this. If I click auto, I get a version where it thinks it's a document and wants to crop it in. Okay, that's fine, but what I'm going to do is show you something a little bit um, better in my opinion, especially for somebody who makes videos to help people learn. So what I'm going to do is go in and 9grid again to crop document. Notice I have got access to photo director and snap seed. Crop document. This time, watch what happens. If I start looking at, I think the, isn't it a parallelogram or a rhombus type shape and do that, what I can do is I can put my finger in the darkened area and press and hold and you get a very good look as if I'm actually coming at it at angle and actually photograph that page as if it was a real book. Take away. If I wanted to reset it and then try it the other way, you can have a good old muck about with this because it's very useful. And then press in the document that's shaded and I get something like that, which is pretty interesting. I'm going to um, make some weird looking shapes like that and you can play around. Sometimes they look ridiculous or perhaps you'll want an effect like that. I'm going to reset and I'm going to come out and I'm going to do one example on this further and that is coming back is I'm going to pick up one of these trees. Let's do that one. This is a regular photo I took the other day, simple HDR um, along with Vibrance HDR and I can't remember if this is Snapseed or not, doesn't matter. Then I go back in again to edit. Oops, sorry, that's my fault, isn't it? Nine grid crop document which says it's under an extension. I don't know where that's come from, whether it's a part of Google Photos. I've certainly not downloaded anything like it. So in other words, you get the idea now. There's my rhombusy type thing. And then I can click and hold and I get something like that. In this particular one, I found because I did it just in, you know, my own personal demo, is that I found that if I came into something like, notice that we get um, the exacting little uh, magnifier coming out. I think it was, no, no, I think it was that one. And I think it was something quite big like that. Press and hold. And you can suddenly actually get an area, say at the bottom there, you may wish to add text. Good question. How do we add text in this? Notice that if I press and hold down here, nothing happens. It has to be in the darkened area of the photo reset. Then I'm going to come back and just say done. And then the other thing I want to show you in this particular video is we can, of course, add tons of color, highlight, but the one that I'm really interested in is text. Now, if we add text here and I'm going to put the word tree, I had two attempts to get this right. And what I mean by that is I've got it, <laughs> not like that, haven't If I want to do a typo, backspace and tap it once. If I go back and I'm learning myself here is if I press and hold, I can move it around. Now what happens is this box. Now what you'll see is if I momentarily press and hold one, two, it stays there. But to get that text bigger, you have to press and hold and then with a separate finger, drag it and twist it around and tilt. Sorry, not tilt, rotate, isn't it? So in other words, I've got one finger, as you can clearly see, in the box. I've got another one that I'm moving around. Now, if I wanted to, let me just make that a bit, that'll do for the purpose of it. Now, if I wanted to try and tap colors, 
nothing actually happens. So I tap it once, I actually get the um, flashing like cursor, carrot, call it what you want. Then I go over to a different color and it changes. Trees are green, yellow. Then I click done and that's how I change my color. Notice that it's defect defaulted itself to smaller, I think, to what it was before. That is it for that. I'm going to leave that as tree and then come back. Remember it says save copy, discard that. One other thing to finish this up and that is I've taken a screenshot of my mobile and I just want to end with how effective this actually is. So I go back to 9grid and then I go crop document and this time I wanted to include that in say a Google Slides and I wanted to bring say something up, not a lot, just a little bit and a little bit down there just like that and then I can click and hold and you can see it's just pretty effective in that it just slightly says actually is that a photograph of your screen and then if I wanted to do the opposite on a little bit more exaggerated I could come in and say let's, let's crop that piece off and crop that piece off and click and hold and you can see it looks like I've taken a photograph a little bit more perspective there in it I would say reset that have a play around with it and quite honestly I think literally we are done.